Do you want to learn how to draw and model frames in SAP 2000 Finite Element Program? In this video, I'll give a quick overview of frame elements in SAP 2000, including how to define material properties. Stay tuned. In SAP 2000, using frame elements, we can compute the effects of biaxial bending, torsion, axial deformation, and biaxial shear deformations of a frame element. So a frame can be drawn in multiple ways. So either you can select it from this quick bar here. If not, you can go to draw and select the multiple options, which are available here as well. So first we'll look into the draw frame option. Once you click, click that, so it'll open up a dialog box, which has different options. So in this first case, we'll go by the default. So here you'll be able to define type of frame which you are going to draw. So one of these is a straight frame or curved frame and cable and tendon. So in this case, we'll go by straight frame and we can define the section properties for these frames as well. I'll keep this as default for now, but later in the tutorial, we'll see how to uh, modify these section properties. And then the moment releases, there are two options. So the frame can be either continuous or pinned. So we'll keep this as the default which is continuous in order to draw you can draw the, by clicking in between um, different width points so we'll be able to draw the frame the other option is the quick draw option by choosing that if we draw in between a couple of grid points a frame will be drawn in between those points which we are going to click for example draw a frame will be drawn wherever we are clicking in between the grid points. And the third option is uh, how to draw quick braces. So what it does is a bracing will be drawn uh, in between these grid points. So for example, here an X bracing will be drawn with a pinned in connections between these grid points. So we can change the type of bracing as well to an inverted V and uh, or V or so on so we can uh, draw multiple or different types of frames quickly by using this option and the other option is to draw the secondary beams so uh, if we go to the plan and to a particular level so using this quick draw frame element i have drawn the primary beams quickly so what i can do is draw a secondary beams in between these grid points. So by the, if I change this to three, so a three number of beams will be drawn in between this enclosed box in the direction parallel to X. So we can change the number of beams which we want and we can change the direction as well. So here we have drawn four secondary beams parallel to Y direction. Next, we are going to look at the frame properties. So by going to set uh, display options, so you can see the labels uh, of the frame. So these labels are assigned by the program by default. So each of these frames has been assigned with a number, which is specific for that particular frame. So for example, this is frame number 53 and so on. Similarly, we can see the end releases for these frames. So whenever there's all these, whenever these points are continuous, that means these points can take a moment and uh, it doesn't have a moment release. But if you, when you see, you see a green point at the end. So what that means is these frames has a moment release. So that means these frames or these beams are going to act as a simply supported members. When you go and select the local axis, you'll see. So for this particular frame, the local one axis is along the frame and local two and three is vertical. So that's the local axis for the frame. We can define different frames or the frame properties by going to define section, frame section. So you can choose different frame section uh, here. So by choosing add property, you have the option of choosing um, white flanges, 
channels, T's and different section properties for steels. Similarly for a concrete, you should be able to select rectangular, circular and, and the different properties as well. And then there are, there are um, other materials as well as a built up steel section. You should be able to see the built up steel section as well. And then by choosing the other, you have the option of selecting a, a section design as well. We are we, we should be able to um, draw a particular section which are non-standard and we can define and um, look into that properties as well. For this particular example, I keep the properties as steel. So here I'll choose the I section and I give a name for that. And then here you should be able to alter the material properties based on the example. And also one other option is to import from the default properties by choosing the import properties. Here you have a bunch of options where you can choose from different uh, standards. So for example, this is Canadian standard and Chinese and uh, US, Indian and so on. So I'll choose this Canadian standard here. And for example, I, I can choose a white flange here, W section. So here, the automatically the properties will be populated. So for example, if I have to change the property of this particular section, I'll choose this and design properties in frame section. And here I should be able to change that particular frame into a different section. So now that this frame has changed into a different section, so while the others remain the same. So that's how you uh, define or change the section property. Also by just choosing this and right clicking here, you can, you should be able to modify here as well. So you go to the section property and choose this particular section and modify properties. And here you should be able to define a different material type for each section as well. So I can add a new material and by default, you can select by different countries and uh, based on the different standards, you should be able to select the uh, properties uh, or you should be able to use a user defined as well. For example, steel, here you can give, for example, 350 MPA and here you should be able to define the material properties here. So that's how you define and choose the material property for each member. Now the material, if you choose this material uh, member, the material property has changed for that particular member. Now we'll have a quick example of this. So, uh, so using the quick, uh, so using the frame, you can draw a frame. And then I choose this and assign restrain for this particular frame. So now I have assigned pin joints and I can select this and assign a different frame uh, property as well. You can select this and assign frame loads, distributor load. You can define live load property so a live load is applied on the frames and now i have saved the model and if i run it so this shows the deformed shape of the uh, frame under dead load and by toggling here, we should be able to see what is the deformed shape on the live load as well. And by going to, by clicking these and going here, on the live load case, you can see what is the bending moment on the frame. And also you should be able to see the shear forces on the frame. So if you want to see the values, you should go, the, go and select uh, show values in the frame. So that shows the what are the, this shows the shear force diagram as well as the 
bending bowman diagram along the frame. If you like the content of the video, please do not forget to give a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you will get a notification anytime a new content comes out. And lastly, please comment below regarding future video suggestions and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. Thank you and hope to see you next time.